welcome to the clinical podcast series brought to you by the American Academy of Optometry Foundation. The topic for this episode is analysis of variation in incidence of optic disc hemorrhage according to seasonal and temperature changes. I'd like to thank our host, Gretchen Bailey, our topical editor, Dr. Andrew Rickson, and our topical expert, Dr. Joe Sauka. And now it's my pleasure to begin today's broadcast. Hi, everyone. I am Gretchen Bailey, and I am a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry, and I am joined by Joe Selka, who is also a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry and optometric clinical provider at Center for Sight in Sarasota and Venice, Florida. Hi, Joe. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Gretchen. Always a pleasure to uh, to speak with you and uh, talk with colleagues. Well, today we are going to be talking about a very recent publication. Uh, this is analysis of variation and in incidence of optic disc hemorrhage according to seasonal and temperature changes by Jang and colleagues in the July 2022 issue of American Journal of Ophthalmology. This study looked at seasonal variation in optic disc hemorrhage. What did the study results show? Very interesting. I, I think the title's a, a, a bit misleading uh, when they talk about seasonal. They actually broke uh, broke the groups up into three groups based upon average temperature uh, being average, under under 10 degrees Celsius, 10 to 20 degrees Celsius, and above 20 degrees Celsius. So it was really a temperature var uh, variation they looked at. And the months were not all sequential. So, you know, it, it wasn't that we had the 12 months that were sequentially divided uh, divided up into three. It was based upon temperature. And what they found was as temperature decreased, the incidence of disc hemorrhage increased. So the colder months had greater uh, greater number of disc hemorrhages identified on, on ocular photography. And this was done over a two-year period uh, in uh, glaucoma's clinic uh, in Seoul, South Korea. And they had about 13,000 uh, 13, and some photographs to look at. And out of, out of that, they had somewhere around 400 disc hemorrhages. So they were able to identify you know, when the photograph was taken. And based upon past information of temperature variance, they were able to you know, assign it to a, a group, you know, a, 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 a temperature. So they found colder temperatures had more disc hemorrhages. So why are seasonal or temperature variations important to note? I, I'm not sure exactly what this study is, is, is giving us, to be honest with you. We, we have been investigating and, and, and looking and studying disc hemorrhages as much as we have the Zapruder films, uh, and we still don't agree on a lot of things about it about disc hemorrhages. This study talked a lot about vascular dysregulation, basal spasm, trying to associate it with uh, the colder temperatures. But I think there might be, you know, some issues here. You know, the, the ephemeral nature of, of disc hemorrhages makes it kind of hard to identify all of them. Now, when I, when I say that is a disc hemorrhage lasts about uh, about 10 weeks. Now, in the study, they noted, you know, that disc hemorrhages can sometimes last as much as 35 weeks. So a disc hemorrhage may have developed at one period of time, but the photograph was taken at another period of time. Thus, they really want to fall in, you know, in, into the right category. Or the fact that disc hemorrhages could happen when there's no camera or, or, or visit uh, available, and they're not, and they're not, they're not uh, not taken, so they're not identified. So I think there I think there are some interesting things here uh, in terms of you know the colder the temperature, and it had nothing to do with the IOP because the IOP did not vary in the study. But the colder temperatures had a uh, higher incidence of disc hemorrhages. But again, it's the sampling. You know, we don't we don't see all the disc hemorrhages. And we don't know exactly when they when they developed. You know, they may have developed many weeks earlier and fall, you know, their the photograph was taken and falls into a, a different temperature category. So I think it, it 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 is somewhat interesting. We have to take the information with a little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of suspicion or temper it that it isn't telling us definitively what's happening with disc hemorrhages yet. It's just a, another piece of the information that we can actually uh, we can actually argue and discuss about. 
So how do the results of this study help to better treat patients with glaucoma? Well, I think it, just, it, it, it tells us some things that we, that we do know that uh, disc hemorrhages do happen. They don't happen to every patient with glaucoma. You know, when they happen, they have been associated with, with worsening. And uh, the important thing is, is telling us to look at the optic nerve and look for those disc hemorrhages. And those are the eyes that seem to be more at risk. All great advice. Joe, thanks very much for talking with me. Thank you, Gretchen. And a special thanks to Cooper Vision for their educational grant to make it all happen.